Hello and good evening, everyone. Tonight we have the honor of having Mr. Bill Johnson back with us. And tonight he's going to talk about how to tame today's volatile markets with vertical spreads. So with that, Bill, welcome back, and we're anxious to see what you have for us tonight. Thanks so much, Becky. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for making it here tonight. And uh, as we all know, markets have been quite volatile lately. As I put in the promotional email there, that so far for 2017, if you look at the number of days of 1% moves or more, up or down, we've had three times as many so far as we've had for all of 2017. And today we had, what, 230, 40 points up on the close. And that marked the first three month or the first three day gain that we've had in over a month. So it's been a lot of whipsawing just back and forth. And, you know, they, they present opportunities because we all know that it's the size of the moves where the money is. Direction helps. But what we really need is large moves. We get those in volatile markets and that's where the money is. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just becomes a risk thing, and it causes fear. It causes people to say, I'm just going to stay out of it, when really these are some really, really good opportunities. So we're going to find out tonight how you can tame this volatility by using a, an option strategy called vertical spreads. Once you understand vertical spreads, there's all kinds of ways. We can use them as insurance. We can use them to speculate. We can use them as um, directional trades. We can put a delta component to them. We can make them neutral. They are probably the most versatile of all option strategies. Further, for those of you who want to go uh, beyond just the basics, you've probably heard of butterflies and condors and different strategies. Those are just two facing vertical spreads. So vertical spreads make up the building blocks of other more advanced strategies. So there's a lot of reasons why we want to learn vertical spreads. So what I want to do tonight is to talk a little bit about what a vertical spread is, how we make them, um, Max gains, max losses, break-even points. And we're going to get into a little bit of some uh, advanced stuff with some of the uh, more advanced traders. So that's what we have on tap for tonight. So let's talk a little bit about taming volatility with vertical spreads. All right, let's start off with the basics. In the financial world, whenever you hear the word spread, it has a very specific meaning. And that is any strategy where you buy one asset, notice I said asset, not option, and simultaneously sell another. So most of the time, if you mention spreads to most astute traders, they're going to immediately think options. But technically speaking, it doesn't have to be. You could buy stock and sell a call against it. Most of you know that's a cover. We could even make the argument that if you sold naked puts, not that we recommend doing that, but just hypothetically, if you did that, uh, you've got, let's say, cash in the account to buy the stock. That's a long position in cash. That's an asset. And you're selling a put. Long position, short position. It's a type of spread. So that's it. just understand that whenever you hear the word spread, it always means we're going to be long something and short something simultaneously. The long and short positions are meant to play off of each other, for lack of a better phrase. So in other words, if I buy IBM and I sell uh, Home Depot, that's not really a spread. They're not really going to interact or be correlated in any way. They, they have to feed off of each other. And that'll make more sense once we talk about vertical spreads. So where do these names come from? Well, if you look at your broker's platforms, you're going to see a quote board that looks something like this. We'll see some later in the presentation. We're going to have the months across the top. We're going to have the strikes vertically along the side. And then in those little grids, we will have the current prices. So take a look at just January, for example. If we perhaps buy the 50 and sell the 55, or if I buy the 55 and sell the 50, doesn't matter. But notice that I'm operating in that vertical column. Okay, That is a vertical spread. What I have spread apart or separated are the prices. Nothing else. I kept the same expiration month. So that's why it's called a vertical spread. On the other hand, I might do, let's say, the 55 strike, and maybe I buy March and sell February out of the order. It'll change the nature 
for the strategy. But in terms of it being a spread, it doesn't really matter. But notice that we're operating horizontally, and that's called a horizontal spread, also called a calendar spread because what we're spreading are months of the calendar, and also called a time spread because that's, after all, what calendars measure. It's a time spread. So those are three different words and phrases that mean exactly the same strategy. And then finally, we have, as you probably guessed, a diagonal spread. Different months, different strikes. Okay, so the vertical spread is just what we're talking about tonight. So we're going to be spreading the prices. It's also sometimes called a price spread. Most people are going to call it a vertical spread. So with a vertical spread, we are going to buy one strike. And for right now, it doesn't matter. Just pick a strike on your board. And then you're going to sell a different strike within that same expiration month. And if you do that, you've got yourself a vertical spread. Now, again, both options are uh, calls or both are puts. They have to have the same, uh, they have to be the same type of option. We also need the same expiration date as we just saw in the previous screen. So, for example, maybe I buy the May 50 call and sell the May 55. That is a vertical spread. Or maybe I buy the June 50 put and sell the June 55. Notice in both, they are exactly the same in terms of we're buying the 50 and selling the 55. The difference is that they are puts. doesn't matter. Calls or puts. As long as they have the same expiration and different strikes, it is a type of vertical spread. So let's start off with a call vertical spread. Let's say we buy the May 50 call and we sell the May 55. Well, think about what you're getting into here. Notice that we have a combination of rights and obligations. All right, for those who might be brand new to options, if you buy an option, you have some type of right. If you sell an option, you have some type of obligation. And when you buy a call, you've got the right to buy shares at whatever that strike is. So the option that we bought gives us the right to buy shares at 50. And I also have the obligation to sell them at 55. And so it's my rights and obligations wrapped up into one package. Well, obviously, just looking at it from that perspective, my maximum gain is 5. Right? If I buy shares at 50 and sell them at 55, that's the most I could ever make. So we're going to find out that spreads always have a limited amount you can lose, what we call the risk, and a limited reward. Let's take a look at put verticals. I can build spreads with calls. I can build them with puts. Let's say we buy the June 50 put and we sell the June 55 put. Again, different strikes, same expiration. Now I've got the right to sell shares at 55. I've purchased, I'm sorry, that should be the obligation to, uh, um, I'm sorry, this is the puts. I have the obligation to buy shares at 55, and I have the right to sell them at 50. I'm sorry, it was a quick copy-paste here at the end. I got those in. Um, but whenever you buy a put, you've got the right to sell. If you sell it, it's an obligation to buy. So think about what's happening here. I'm buying shares at 55, and I'm selling them at 50. What is that? That's a $5 loss. So why would we do it? We're going to find out this is a credit spread. We're going to get paid to put this on, but it's still a type of spread. Okay, so in this case, our maximum loss would be um, $5. And I think the slide was intended to be buy the June 55 and sell the 50, in which case it would be a long put spread. That'll make more sense as we go through the uh, presentation here. So why do we want to use vertical spreads? Well, there's a lot of reasons why we might do it. Probably the basic, the textbook version is that we are mildly bullish or mildly bearish. We're not thinking that the stock is going to take off to the moon. Otherwise, we'd just buy the option. We're not thinking it's going to come crashing down. Otherwise, we'd just buy the put. We just think it's going to go up a little bit, a few points, 10, 15 points even possibly, or just down a little bit. But the good news is, is that by having a much more limited range for our outlook, it's not going to cost us much. And especially in these volatile markets, look at some of these options, especially on the Amazons and Googles and NVIDIAs of the world. Price lines, things that might cost you $20, $30, $40, depending on how far out in time you're going. And get you in for 2 bucks. 
three bucks. Trade-off is you're not going to have unlimited potential for gains. So that's our outlook, either mildly bullish or bearish. Technically speaking, we can also create what's called a neutral outlook, where I don't even need to, the stock to move. Again, what's called a negative gamma position. But for the most part, what most of you will be doing is a directional spread. So you would be mildly bullish or bearish. So what's another reason we use them? Well, as I just mentioned, uh, one of the most common is when options are expensive. Going into earnings, and we see that you got to pay 20 bucks because it might gap up 100 points or down 100 points. And they get very, very expensive. A lot of traders say, gee, I'd like to play this, this upcoming earnings here. Here, but I just don't want to put you know two thousand dollars for one contract on the board or more. Well, again, I can get you in for two hundred bucks. Trade off is it won't be won't have unlimited gains, but at least you're in. It's better than nothing. Uh, just to back up a second, we can traders. There are some volatility skews and tilts and things that we can play by using vertical spreads. So they are incredibly powerful and very versatile. But for tonight, I'm primarily going to focus on looking for a direction, either slightly up or slightly down. And our primary reason for using them is because the options are getting really expensive. All right, let's take a look at some of the names. Whenever you start trading spreads, there's a lot of different classifications these things go by. Your broker's platforms are going to show them. It's going to show it's a bull spread. It's going to say it's a debit. It's going to say money going out of your account. It's a long spread. People get so confused with this stuff. So let's break it down and make sure everybody understands what we're looking at here. If you buy the May 50 call and sell the May 55, we call that the May 50-55 vertical call spread. That's how we name them, just expiration, and then we divide up the strikes and usually lift it, uh, list them in ascending order. So we'd call it the May 50-55 vertical spread. And if we do that, this is what our profit and loss diagram will look like. All right, we've talked about these before, um, but just for some of you who might be new, let's see if I have a pen color here. So what, what you're looking at here are stock prices on this horizontal right there. And what this is telling you is that we've got various stock prices as the stock price moves in this direction, you can see it's telling us that this is going to be a loss. But it's limited. That's why this graph flattens out down here. So if the stock is 45, I find 45 and I see the graph lines up at about minus 250. So I would lose $2.50 or $250 if I have one contract. What if the stock gets up to 60? Find 60. I trace a line up to my graph over here at 250. So it looks like I'm going to make about 250 bucks if the stock is 60 at expiration. So that's the way that you read these. They're very important tools because they really show us what we're doing with hedges and morphs and rolls, what we're moving from and to. But this is the basic shape of your vertical spread. Notice you've got limited losses down here on the far left. doesn't matter how far that stock falls. It can go to zero. You've got a limited loss. What if it rises? Limited gains. So again, this is why they have limited gains and limited losses. Let's take a look at the put side. If you buy the June 55 put and sell the June 50, we would call that the June 50-55 vertical spread. Again, notice the numbers are in ascending order from low to high, 50-55. Some people and some platforms will show them in terms of uh, they would put it the 5550 because the 55 put is more valuable. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But most of your platforms are going to list them in ascending order. So we would call this the June 5055 vertical spread. And if we do that, this is what we're going to look like. Notice that we're bearish. I need the stock price to fall. I need the stock price to move in this direction to get me into gains. And as before, it doesn't matter how far that stock price falls, there's only so much I can make. So it, it is bearish, but it's limited. What happens if the stock price rises? Limited losses. What if the stock is up here at 65? 
to the left, I'm going to lose about $2.50. Now we're going to find out, depending on prices and depending on the strikes you purchase, it's not always going to be pay $2.50 to make $2.50 like I've drawn here. I've just done that more for the symmetry. But um, they're always going to have the same basic shape with the max gains and max losses being limited. Everybody see that? All right, next step. This is where people start to get really confused is with the different classifications that we end up with with vertical spreads. So, for example, let's say I, you know, tell my friend I'm going to buy the 100 call and sell the, the 105 call. Well, there's lots of different ways we can uh, classify this. We might need to know, is it bullish or bearish? Is it long or short? Is it a debit or a credit? Lots of different characteristics or uh, qualifications that we might put on these spreads, and people find them very confusing. So let me just show you how easy it is. We're going to take a little bit of a detour here for just a couple of slides. I'm going to show you some very helpful pricing principles. Now I go into a lot more of these in the Alpha Trader, but there's two key pricing principles that will make your life so much easier with vertical spreads. So let's take a look at some of your key pricing principles here. First one that will help you is to understand that um, principle number one. Lower strike calls have to be worth more money than higher strikes. Okay, they have to be. This is assuming the same stock and same time to expiration. So if you have a 50 call and a 55, you know the $50 call is going to carry a bigger price tag on it. Without even looking at the stock, it makes no difference how much time is there, there is to expiration or what the volatility is. Lower strikes have to be worth more money. So if you're looking at the 50 call and the 55 for a given stock in expiration, you know the 50 is worth more. Why? Because it gives you the right to pay less. All things being equal, if somebody says, I'll let you pay 50 or I'll let you pay 55, which would you take? Well, of course, we're going to say I would rather pay 50. Well, in a financial market, in an active auction, which is what it is, people are going to kind of rush out and bid higher. They're going to be more competitive to buy that 50 call relative to the 55. So this is yet another reason for vertical spreads. If these prices got a, a little bit out of line, we can actually do what's called a risk ARB by maybe buying that 50 and selling that 55 against it. But the point is in an active market, the $50 call will always be worth more money. Again, same stock and expiration. That's it. Higher strike puts have to be more valuable than lower strikes. So if we look Look at the uh, $50 put versus the 45. What do I know? The 50 put's got to be worth more money. Why? It gives me the right to receive more money. When you exercise a put, I'm selling my shares for 50 in this example rather than 45. So if somebody walks up to you and says, would you rather sell your shares for 50 or 45? My guess is you're going to say 50. And the market realizes that. The market realizes there's an inherent benefit in that 50 put. It has to have more value. And if not, there's what's called an arbitrage that will take place in the markets within nanoseconds and correct that. But that's why you and I as retail traders know that the 50 put has to be worth more money. Okay, so those are uh, the first principle. Lower strike calls and higher strike puts have to be worth more money. Principle number two. This one's a little bit quirky, a little bit hard to understand. I'll show you how easy it is with an example, but let me give you the definition. And it says that for any two calls or for any two puts, in other words, not one of each, the difference in their prices cannot exceed the difference in the strikes. So again, same stock, same expiration. Pick two call options. I don't care which ones they are. The 50 and the 55, the 50 and the 60 the 50 and the 70. It doesn't matter. The difference in those two option prices can never be more than the difference in those strikes. And there's another reason that that has sets up an arbitrage if that does happen, but we need to know that for our verticals. So here's a little bit more intuitive way to understand what that principle is. Let's say we got the $50 call trading for seven in the open market. That's the current options price. And for that same expiration month, we see the 55 call is trading for a buck. What this principle is saying is that this cannot happen. 
in an active market. This would never, ever happen because the difference in the strikes is five. But notice I've set this up that the difference in the prices is seven. And the principle says the difference in prices cannot be bigger than the difference in strikes. Okay, so everybody see that. That's going to help you a lot for understanding verticals. Uh, David is asking, not sure how to close a vertical. Are you taking these to expiration? Um, good question. I'm not going to get so much into the hows and whys of uh, closing and opening and decisions that we're going to look at, but you can. You could certainly take those into close. Uh, normally, we don't let them expire that way because then you're going to go through potential exercises and, and assignments. Um, but normally, we would just buy it as a spread and sell it as a spread. So if you, you can click on your broker's platform. Here's the 50-55 spread. Buy it. Boom. You're in. Goes up. You don't have to wait till expiration, but at some point in the future, it goes up in value. Sell that, that vertic uh, vertical spread, and you're out. Okay, so you're just selling, buying it as a package, and selling it as a package. All right. So it's a key point to understand that the maximum difference is the difference in strikes. The difference can be less. That principle said that the maximum difference so here's a little example. take a look at these option quotes. Um, this is right at expiration when we had maybe a couple hours left. you can see it was at ten o'clock in the morning up here. but take a look at um just get a different ink color here. Take a look at the fifteen strike right here. Everybody see that? It shows that the asking price is $23. Take a look at the 20. These strikes right here. Five. What's the difference in the prices? Exactly five. Not more, not less. Exactly five. Okay. Watch what happens if we pick two different ones. Let's do... Um, Let's do the 12 and a half and the 15. That's only two and a half wide. Look at the difference. Exactly two and a half. And that's because we are at expiration and these are in the money options. So again, that principle is saying that that is the very best that they could ever be. But what? notice it doesn't happen anymore. So if I look at um, the 55 and 60 right here I have 25.10 and 21.10 well that's only four dollars and ten cents difference it's not five it's less so notice that prior to most cases not going to be right there at the full value of that spread they're going to be less and that's because there's extrinsic value associated with these options. All right, so I just, I'm just showing you these slides so that people understand that principle. That's just saying that's the most it could ever be. All right, now let's move forward, and I'm going to show you just how easy your four basic vertical spreads are. And again, these are keys because not only for verticals, for butterflies, for condors, for morphing, a lot of times we're using um, verticals, we're using butterflies. Just going to make you a lot more knowledgeable if you understand how to construct these four basic spreads. So notice that with the bull spread in green, I can construct it with calls or puts. With the bear spread there in red, I can also construct it with calls or puts. In the previous example, I just made the bull spread with calls and I made the bear spread with puts just because that's more intuitive for most people. Calls are bullish, puts are bearish. But I don't have to. I can use calls or puts for both. So if I can use calls or puts for a bull spread and I can use calls or puts for a bear spread, those are four different basic spreads. These are the ones that you have to know well. All right, so we want to spend a little bit of time here. Let's start with the bull spreads. Anytime you buy the lower strike and sell a higher strike, it's bullish. 
I don't care if it's calls or puts. So look at our examples. Buy the 50 call, sell the 55 call. Buying the low strike, selling the high strike. Second example, buy the 50 put, sell the 55 put. Buying the low strike, selling the high strike. Those are exactly the same things in the fact that they are bullish. I know it looks a little weird. You're going, how can I be bullish by using puts? It'll make more sense in a little bit. But for right now, one step at a time. Buying the low strike, selling the high strike is bullish. And the easy way that you can remember it is look at your mnemonic. Buy low, sell high. Acronym there, or initialism, I guess it would be called. Kind of looks like the word bullish. So if you're buying the low strike, selling the high strike, it is a type of bull spread whether you're using calls or puts. And so this is what our profit and loss diagram would look like. Notice that I've made my long call in green, long call spread, and I've made the what would be a short put spread in red. But in both cases, we are buying the low strike and we are selling the high strike, and that's why we're getting to the bull spread side. It's a little bit of a hint right now. One is long, one is short. So if that sounds a little, still doesn't quite sit right, think about this. If you buy a put, aren't you bearish? What is the trader on the other side of that trade who's selling the put? He must be bullish. If you buy a call, you're bullish. The person who sold that call must be bearish. That is always true for traders. The buyer and the seller are on opposite sides of the fence. So if that helps you to see how I can get to the bullish side by using puts, yes, the put spread buyer would be bearish. Bullish. All right, and in both cases, we're going to end up looking something like this. We'll have a bull spread. Bear spreads, obviously just going to be the opposite. If you're buying the high strike and selling a lower strike, you've got some type of bear spread. So in the examples below, I'm buying the 60 put, selling the 50 put. Buying the 60 call, selling the 50 call. Buy the 70 call, sell the 40 call. Doesn't matter. Buy the high strike, sell the low. It is going to be bearish. So here we go. Again, this is a bear spread, but notice I can do it by being either long the put spread, which again makes intuitive sense for most people. I'm buying a put spread, but I can also get bearish by selling the call spread. So just kind of remember that if you're buying the high strike, selling the low, it's going to have a bearish bias to it. Okay, so what's the difference in these? I kind of gave away the answer here, but if you're buying the 50 call and selling the 55 call, or if you're buying the 50 put and selling the 55 put, what's the difference in these? The difference is that when you buy the spread, it's a debit spread. And when you sell the spread, it's a credit spread, right? Isn't that the basic idea that we talk about with options? Anytime you buy something, you're spending money, it's a debit. And if you're selling something, you're receiving money into your account, it's a credit. And that's what's happening here. Because the $50 call, take a look at the first example. Let me grab the. Take a look at the first one right here. If I buy the 50 call, we know that it has to be worth more money than the 55. So it doesn't matter. Make up prices. This one's trading for uh, seven. And this one's maybe trading for four. I'm spending seven, but I'm receiving four. Net cash outflow of three. It's a debit spread. It has to be. Why? Because the 50 call has to be worth more money. Look down at our credit spread down here. Think back to your pricing principles. These are puts. Which one is worth more money? The 55. What am I doing with it? I'm selling it. And therefore, I must be receiving more money than I'm spending. So let's use the same numbers here. If I collect seven on this one, but I spend four, I get a credit of three. So if we are bullish and we're buying the call spread, it's a debit, but I could also do exactly the same thing by selling the put spread, 
and get a credit. Now, before I take the next step, I'm going to make this very, very clear throughout the presentation, but it doesn't hurt to talk about it now. Please do not think that a I hear a lot of traders say, oh, I only do credit spreads because I'm getting paid or because I get free money. They just drop money into your account. It's not true. I'm going to show you in a little bit that, a, that really all vertical spreads are debit spreads, even though we might call them credit spreads. So don't get too hyped up about debit and credit. What you want to get hyped up on is which one is better for you. And we'll talk about that at the very end of the presentation. But for right now, does everybody see that one is going to be a debit and one will be a credit? So let's run through some classifications here. Let's practice. You're going to buy the 100 call and sell the 105 call. Is it a bull spread or a bear spread, everybody? Buying low, selling high. It's a bull spread. Exactly right. Uh, somebody asked you, is it long or short? This is always easy to figure out. Is it cash going out of your account to put it on or, or coming in? It's long. Why? Go back to your pricing principles. I'm buying the more valuable expensive piece. I'm selling off one that's not quite worth as much. So I'm going to collect some money for it, but not as much to offset my uh, total cost on the 100. So it is. we are buying the spread. It's a long spread. That's a standard definition, especially in options, that any time we're spending money on it, we are long. What if it's uh, somebody says, is this a debit or a credit? Well, once you understand that long is synonymous with debit, it's also a debit spread. So again, this is why so many traders feel that verticals get confusing. Because your broker's platform might say, you know, are you looking for the bull spread, the bear spread? Or you place a bull spread, or you've got a long spread, or this is a credit spread, or a debit spread. It's very easy to figure out once you know your pricing principles. All right, so everybody see that one. Let's try a different one. Buy the 100 put and sell the 105 put. I see that I'm dealing with puts. I'm buying the low, selling the high. I immediately know what. Uh, yes, Jess is saying the higher uh, price strike is closest to the stock and the credit spread. Uh, that's not always true, but in most cases, you're right if you're going to do it out of the money. Yeah. Yep. Very good. So is it bullish or bearish? Let's start with that. No, buying low, selling high. Buying the low strike, selling the high strike. Look, very good. It's a bull spread. Uh, is it a long or short spread? Very good. It's short. Okay, why? Because I'm receiving money. How do I know that? Look at your pricing principles. I told you those pricing principles are going to come in handy. We're going to use them in every single instance. I'm selling a 105 put, which is definitely going to be worth more than the 100. I've got more money coming in. It's a, it's a sale. It's a net sale. It's a credit. It's a short position. So, again, long, short, debit, credit. The reason I'm showing you the debit or credit one is because a lot of traders get mixed up with them. They'll say, um, well, I shorted this spread. Well, was it a debit spread or a credit spread? Well, you shouldn't have to ask. If you shorted I've had people all say, I bought a spread, and they'll say, well, was it a debit spread or a credit spread? Well, if I bought it, it's a debit spread. So those are always mirror images of each other. Okay, everybody got it? So this is what we get. Again, long call spread equals a short put spread. In both cases, we're buying the low strike and selling the high strike. Everybody see that? So again, don't get too confused that one's long and one's short or one's debit and one's credit. They're just two different ways of going about the same thing. Let's go back to some more classifications. We're going to buy the 105 call and sell the 100. Think buy low, sell high, or buy high, sell low. What is it? 
Yeah, it's going to be a bear spread. Yeah, that's a bear spread. We're buying the high strike, selling the low strike. Is it long or short? Which one are we selling? We're selling the 100. Lower strike calls have to be worth more money. Therefore, we're receiving more money than we're spending. It is a short spread. So if you look on your broker's platform, it's going to show a minus sign on that spread. It's going to say that you're short. And people get confused and go, how come it's saying I, I, I've got this spread? I'm, no, you don't have it. You sold it. It's a short spread. Debit or credit? Obviously going to be credit. You're receiving more money than you're spending. Right? So part of what I'm trying to show you here is very good exercises every time, even if you're just practicing in paper money. Always go through these questions, and eventually it will just become second nature to you. Try last one. We're going to buy the 105 put and sell the 100 put. Buying high, selling low. So is that bull or bear, everyone? Yeah, I like that, but gym, mental gymnastics. Yeah, it's a bear spread. Is it long or short? Ask yourself which one is more expensive, and are, on a net basis, will we be putting money out or bringing money in? Yeah, it's going to be a long spread. Why? The 105 puts worth more money on a net basis. I'm spending more money than I'm receiving. Debit or credit? You should now, everybody should know, long is synonymous with debit and short is synonymous with credit. Correct. And again, I'm not doing that to confuse everybody. It's just that I hear a lot of people say that. I've got a long spread. Well, is it debit or credit? Get that out of the way. Long is debit. Short is credit. Good. If you understand those, you're going to see your broker's platforms are going to throw all these terms at you. We're in your statements you know here you had a short spread people i don't understand why it's telling me that i'm short i placed the trade on it i've got it no you didn't okay so in those two examples whether we're buying the 55 put selling the 50 we're buying the 55 call and selling the 50 we're buying high selling low it's a bear spread but notice that if I use the calls, it creates a credit, and if I use the puts, it creates a debit. And yet it gives me the same identical profile. So, another point of confusion for people. What in the world is, what's the philosophy here with debit and credit spreads? Well, a little mnemonic I used to like to teach is that debit spreads, you're, what you're trying to do is reduce the cost. That's your motivation. So I see this Amazon option that's trading for $40. I'm going, gee, I don't know if I want to spend $40 on an option. But if I sell off this other one, I can get $37 back. I've now reduced my cost from 40 to 3 In other words, I'm being cheap. I'm trying to reduce the cost. So any time that you use a debit spread, the philosophy is we're trying to reduce the cost. However, if we use credit spreads, we're not doing it to reduce the cost. We're doing it to reduce the risk. So with a credit spread, the philosophy is I'm chicken. In other words, I want to sell that 55 put out there naked by itself. But I also know that's not real safe. So maybe just in case, but underneath it as an insurance policy. In other words, I'm, I'm fearful. I'm taking some of that nice big credit that I got, and I'm putting it into another less valuable option because I'm afraid. I'm chicken. So it's kind of a neat little mnemonic to think of cheaper chicken uh, as to what's motivating us. And, and it will help you uh, in a little bit when we talk about that all spreads are really debit spreads and to show that you really shouldn't get caught up into the word credit when you're doing spreads. There are entire books written on credit spreads. And it's a dead giveaway that people think that there's something special about a credit spread. There's not. There's no reason in the world that anybody should focus on a credit spread. If you want to focus on vertical spreads, that's fine. 
But you are going to find, and we'll look at some examples, that sometimes the debit spread is the better one and sometimes the credit. So why would you want to just specialize in half the board, not knowing if it's the best one or not? Right, so just keep in mind that whenever we buy a spread, we're doing it to reduce the cost. When we use a credit spread, we're doing it to reduce the risk. So, for instance, let's say this is the 50-55 call spread. Does everybody see how that left, that kind of that classic hockey stick look that we see for a call option? Isn't that what just an outright call option looks like? And if I used a $50 call, isn't that what it would look like just in red? Well, if I sell off the 55 against it, I'm going to now create that yellow portion across the top. I'm capping it. Why would I do that? Because I'm trying to reduce the cost. Again, maybe that $50 call was going to cost me 20 or 30 bucks. Now it's costing me 250 So it's a cheap strategy. I'm trying to reduce the cost of that long position. Let's take a look at um, the bear spread. What if I sold a 50 put? I'm sorry, what if I sold the uh, 50 call? Isn't that what a short 50 call would look like? Just by itself? Yeah. Well, that's looking awfully risky. I've got unlimited upside risk. What can I do to get rid of that fear? I could buy the 55 call and get that little yellow tail out there on the right and flatten out. But do you see how I end up with the same profile? It's just a question of whether I'm approaching it from the left or from the right. Okay, the credit spreads are fear. That's what's motivating us. The debit spreads are about cost. Let's turn our attention now to max gains, max losses, break-even points, everything that everybody wants to know about any particular strategy. For debit spreads, the most you can make, we talked about that in the pricing principles. I even talked about it in one of the introductory slides. If I buy the 50 and sell the 55, most I can make is 5. But then, of course, I have to subtract out what I paid. So the 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 uh, debit spread, the difference in strikes is um, the most it can be worth. We have to back out what we paid. What about a credit spread? Credit spread, as is true with all option strategies where we sell something, it's the amount that you received. Whether you sell an option by itself or whether you sell a spread, whatever you sold that spread for is the most that you can, that you can make from it. Now, again, I don't like looking at formulas. They can be confusing. I would much rather see people understand their pricing principles. All right, so we're going to take a look at that in a moment here, and I'll show you how easy it is. What about your max losses? Debit spread, it's the amount you paid. It's true for a long option. If I paid $3 for an option, that's the most I can lose. If I paid $3 for a debit spread, that's the most I can lose. Credit spread. Most I can make is what I receive, but I'm now on the hook for the difference in strikes. You see, a credit spread is really a liability. It can only go against me. There's no asset there. It's a short spread. Right? If you sell a naked call option, where's the asset in that? Well, it's the cash you got in your account from the sale, but other than that, you got a big fat liability facing you. In other words, you don't receive money to put an asset into your account. You want an asset, you got to buy it. If you want to sell it, you have to assume a liability. Okay, so for the credit spread, the max loss is the difference in strikes, but then we offset it with the amount that we receive from the sale. So let's forget about the option pricing principles and take a look at how easy it is. Here is a debit spread. If this is money going out of our account, let's say that we bought the 50 call and we sold the 55. And as I've talked about in previous webinars, we know that this is where the bends occur in these graphs right there. 
So what's the maximum we can lose? Well, I must have paid $3 for this. That's where it lines up over here. But now think about this. What's the difference in strikes? $5. It's a $5 wide spread. So that spread by itself, just looking at your broker's platform, the most it could ever be worth is $5. Think of it as a package. We don't know what the individual options are worth unless we go look at the individual options. If we're on the spread screen, all we see is what the package is worth. That's the most that could ever be worth. But what do we pay for it? Three. So it's the most that I've made or can make. Is two. And that's where the graph lines up here. So if you think back to your formulas, the maximum gain for a debit spread was the difference in strikes minus the amount that you paid gives us the two. But again, that's confusing. Just think about it. If I paid three, it's five dollars wide. The most I can make is the balance or two. So another little check you can do. Remember when you were taking basic math, they said you always <laughs> ways you can always check to make sure you did the addition or subtraction right. Same thing here. Your max loss and your max gain, forgetting about the plus and minus signs, added together have to equal the difference in strikes. All right, so if I paid $4 for it, I could make one. Let's take a look at a credit spread. Now, I made this one in green to show the credit spread. Let's say that we received a $2 credit. What's my maximum gain? What did the formula tell you? The amount you received, 2 bucks. Nope. But what's the most I can lose? This is a $5 liability to me. All right, so this, if I'm bullish with a credit, this has to be put. So if I've sold the 55 put, I have the obligation to buy at 55, and I bought the 50 put because I'm chicken. I don't want this unlimited downside. So I have the right to buy at 50. If I buy at 55 and sell at 50, isn't that a $5 loss? Well, there's no asset in that package. It is simply an insurance policy. You are assuming $5 of risk in exchange for putting $2 cash into your account. So what's the most that we could actually lose? I, spread could be worth minus 5, but I collected 2. Therefore, it must be minus 3. And if you go back to the definitions, the maximum loss for a credit spread said the difference in strikes minus the credit gives you the debit or the maximum loss. So again, for, I, I Visualize it and understand it intuitively instead of trying to memorize definitions. But if you need the definition to go check yourself, at least you've got them. All right, let's take a look at some examples. So here's eBay trading at 77 bucks. Got to pay 7,700 bucks if we want 100 shares. But down here, I can buy the 70 strike call for 1360. What if I don't want to put that out? Or what if I don't have the cash? Or what if it's a volatile market? What if it's going into earnings? I don't want to put that much in. I certainly don't want to buy shares, but I might not even want to buy the one call. What could I do? Well, maybe I could sell the 75. All right, so if I buy this for 1360 and I collect 1020, how much do I how much do I spend in total everyone? I pay 1360, I collect 1020, correct. We would say that's a net debit of 340. And your broker's platform, just like if you're buying stock or an option, you want to go at market or do you want to go to limit? I might set my limit at 340 or at 335. Or do an or better order at 360, but the point is that's what they're asking for. What is the net? Okay? 
So if we come over to here, and you can see that the graph lines up right here at about $3.40. So if this is $5 wide, it was the 70-75 call spread, what's the most I can make? If the package can be worth a five dollars and I spent three forty correct, a dollar sixty is my maximum gain. I'm sure some people out there are going, why in the world would you spend three forty to only make a dollar sixty? Well, I don't have time to get into it in this presentation, but it all has to do with risk and reward. The stock is already out here somewhere. So we're tilting the odds in our favor that we are in fact going to expire as a winner. So the market starts bidding the prices higher and it therefore starts pushing your rewards lower. So don't think good or bad, just think different. They are all different risk reward profiles. But at least you know how to figure out the basics of the max gains and losses. All right, let's try a different one. Let's say that we're bearish. Same stock, same time, but now for some reason we're just bearish. I don't want to short the shares. I might not even want to buy the $75 put here for $720. Or maybe I want to buy 10 contracts. It's going to cost me $7,200. Might not want to do that. So what could I do to reduce here the 70 strike for $490? Okay, what is my net now? So if I spend a net debit of $2.30, that's the most I can lose no matter how high that stock price goes. You can see we're lining up there at about 230 But I obviously want it to fall. That's how I get into this profit territory here. What's my maximum gain up here? Keep in mind this is a $5 wide spread. It's the 70-75 spread. Would be 270. Very good. So because this is favorable, like most people would say, oh, I'm spending less to make more. What is it telling you? That the stock is out here somewhere. Okay, we need a lot more movement to get to um, to get to that profit. All right, let's try another one. Bear call spread. I'm bearish. Would I do the 70 call? That's why I've got it highlighted in red here. I want to sell that call trading for 1320. But that's a naked position if I just did that by itself. And even though ideally that's what I'd really like to do, I'm a little chicken. I don't want to do it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to buy the 75 call in case it goes up. I'm going to take some of my 1320 and buy a little insurance policy for 1060. I'm chicken. Right? In a perfect world, I'd rather keep the full 1320 rather than to have to, have to spend $10.60 of that. All right. So what have we got here? All right. So if I if I have 1320 going out and I've got 1060 coming back to me, I'm sorry. Said that back. I got 1320 coming in. I've got 1060 going out. What have I got? It's a 260 credit. Yeah. See, it would have been 1320, but I'm chicken. I don't want to do that. So I still get a credit. of 260 and therefore what's my maximum loss this is a five dollar liability to me would be 240 and again 260 plus 240 equals the difference in strikes what about the break even now that we've talked about max gains and losses very easy think about it this way if I start up here with a 260 credit, I can afford to have that stock move in this direction 
by two dollars and sixty cents. So just take seventy plus two sixty. I could also look at it synthetically and pretend, even though it wasn't a debit spread, I could pretend that it was, and say it's seventy five. And most brokers platforms I'm going to show you that anyway, but if you just so you know where they're coming from, those are your break even points. All right, let's try a bull put. Now I'm bearish on eBay. I'd love to go buy this January 75 put here in red, but it's $6.90. And for whatever reason, I don't want to put that much into the option. Well, I'm cheap. Now I'm trying to reduce the cost for this debit spread. I'm going to sell this 70 put and collect $5.30. What do I have to spend now? I have to spend $1.60. Well, that's a whole lot better than $6.90. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. I've got um, why did I have? We'll put line six ninety. I guess it looks right. It just looked like it was off there. The scale looks a little off on it, but it might just be the might be the wrong slide. But what happens is that we have. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's what I was doing that for a credit. Yeah, this should be only at a dollar thirty. Right. Ah. So for. Oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. It's a, I thought it was bear put. Correct. It's a bull put, so it's a credit spread. We're receiving. What I'd like to do is to sell the 75 put. That's what I'd like to do for 690, but I'm fearful of that. So I'm going to do what? I'm going to buy this buy the 70 put underneath it. But my heart would really be to just sell that 75 put naked. And so this is the chicken strategy, and what I want to do credit and buy this one out here for an insurance policy. So this becomes a dollar sixty. Is my gain. That's the net credit that I received. What's my maximum loss? Is three forty. Okay, so that's again three forty and a dollar sixty add up to the difference in strikes. So those are the exercises you want to go through to understand the vertical spreads. Try them out in your broker's platform. But let me just say very quickly, because I showed some examples where we might pay 250 to make 250 or pay three to make two, pay four to make one. People go, why would you do that? It's all about risk and reward. It's all about probabilities. So for example, eBay here is 77 and a half. Look at the 5560 vertical spread. Doesn't it sound like we're, if we buy the 5560, that we're kind of already guaranteed to be a winner? Almost. I mean, the stock's at 77. Probably going to be above 60. And that means that's going to be an expensive spread and it's not going to leave us a lot of profit. On the other hand, if I buy the 7075, I'm much closer to the current 77 stock price. And that means I don't have the confidence that this 70-75 spread is going to expire in the money. Riskier, cheaper, and therefore more profits. And look at what happens to our vertical spread graphs. You can see that the uh, 5560 here in red is going to cost us a lot. But when I did the 70-75, it's only going to cost me maybe, what, 320 to make uh, $1.60. So it's all about risk and reward. And that's a whole separate course on how we decide which one is best for us. The basic idea is, though, you have to have a target of what you're trying to earn on your account. No reason in taking more risk to get the same reward. But having said that, we have to beware of the alligator spread. Now, an alligator spread is not really a true strategy. This is what we used to call them back on the, the trading desk with uh, active trader options and stuff that if you start buying 
very close to the difference in strikes. Like let's say you bought the 50 call and sold the 55 for a net debit of five. You've got no way you could ever make a dime. Or even if you paid 490, 480 after commissions, not going to make a single dime. In other words, you're up to your eyeballs and alligators. Dangerous place to be. So the idea is even though we can pick any set of strikes that we want, we don't want to pick them so deep in the money that we're paying very close to that full difference because there's just no room for profit. Okay, now let's talk about, we're going to wrap up here in just a moment. This is some of the advanced stuff for some people who might be a little more well-versed with vertical spreads, but let me just show you a neat little trick here. Buying the call spread is exactly the same thing as selling the put spread. So if we buy the 100-105 call spread for three, that's one on left in red. Theoretically, if I look across the board, I should be able to sell that same, what we call the corresponding spread, the same strikes, for two. Why? Why should it be selling for two? We'll take a look. If I can buy this spread for three, and therefore I can make two, and they're exactly the same, what should the credit be on this one? The credit should be two, giving me a max loss of three. They're exactly the same. So if your debit spread is trading for three, the credit spread, the corresponding credit spread, theoretically, notice I said theoretically, is trading for two. All right? It's theoretically trading for two. And I'm going to close and show you a neat little trick you can use when we break away from theory and get into the real world. Now, another area of mistakes. I kind of mentioned this before in the presentation. All vertical spreads are actually debit spreads. I don't care if you call them a credit spread. You're going to get dinged for a debit. Why? Why is there really no such thing as a credit spread? What I'm trying to show you here is don't get hung up on the word credit. Let's take a look at the 100-105 the call spread here for three. If I spend $3 and I make two, the broker's going to hit you with what's called a 100% margin requirement. That's true for all positions except nakeds. Broker's going to say, we are going to debit your account for the maximum loss, which is $300. Now, instead you say, ooh, I'm going to do the credit spread because I get paid. I get this credit of two up here. And the broker says, Mr. Trader, I couldn't care less about your maximum gain. We are here to protect the firm. Oh, what's the maximum loss? Ah, maximum loss is three. So the broker is going to say, I know it's a credit spread but we are going to debit your account $300. Now, I kind of short, took a shortcut. Technically, you're going to see a $500 margin requirement, and you'll see $200 cash, so it's going to really ding your buying power by $300 for your margin cash available. But the point is that your account is going to be debited. So there's no reason in the world to think that credits are somehow better just because you like the word credit and think that money is just magically flowing into your account. It's not. They're both debits. So why would we use one over another? This uh, slide's a little hard to see, but I just clipped this right before we started the presentation. In the real world, the idea that it should equal the uh, corresponding or the call spread should equal the corresponding put spread doesn't always hold. We get what are called skews. There's a put call skew and there's also uh, vertical skews that we get or just a positive negative skews. And they're not big enough to, to create an arbitrage to pull them out, but they're certainly big enough to make money on. And if you're doing vertical spreads, don't get hung up onto debit and credit. Understand that the... Um, Debit spread has to equal the uh, corresponding put spread or the, the corresponding sale. So, for example, 
Let's see if we can find some here on the board. I found them earlier. Um, let's look at this 215, 220 vertical spread. $5 wide. And the mark, which is the midpoint, which is in almost all cases where you're going to get filled, is 245. So think about it. If I spend 245, what's the most I can make? Very good. Most I can make is 255. Oh, 255. But what about all your friends who say, ooh, I only do credit spreads? They're going to make 230. And therefore, the most they can lose is 270. Now compare them. Would you rather make two? I'm sorry, would you rather make 255 or 230? This one's better. Would you rather only be at risk of 245 loss or 270 loss? In this case, the debit spread wins. Hands down, do the debit spread. Okay, now there are more advanced topics when we get into morphs and potential morphs, why we might still take the credit spread, but if you're just starting out as vertical spread traders, take the debit spread. What about this one down here? If I can buy this for $1.80, what's the most I can make? Three twenty. Take a look before you put that trade in. Take a look at your corresponding put spread. Theoretically, it should be selling for three twenty. It's only two ninety. My gosh, much better over here on the debit side. We'll take the three twenty. Most you're going to make here is two ninety, even though it's the wonderful, fabulous, infallible credit spread. Don't get caught up into the word credit. Think bullish, think bearish, think which one is best. Now, what's going on here is just that we're getting some skews. Uh, in these cases, the option that you'd be buying is priced a little higher than it theoretically should be, or perhaps the call spread that we're selling is priced more and we're receiving more. But the point is that we are getting a favorable position from the debit spread. That is not always true. It's just as likely as we, in fact, take a look at this top one right here. If I spend three twenty-five, I can make a dollar seventy-five here on the credit spread. I can make about a dollar eighty-eight. That's very common of out-of-the-money puts. We'll start picking up some vertical skews or some put call skews down there. So that's getting in, into a little bit more of the advanced stuff, but I wanted to throw that out there for all the traders who have uh, traded vertical spreads and still maybe do. But the main thing I just want you to see is that they are incredibly versatile. And no matter how volatile markets get, the very most you could ever pay is a difference in strikes. Of course, prior to expiration, you won't. So if you're doing a $5 spread, you know, two, two fifty, three bucks, you can get in. You want to play an earnings play? You want to play a bounce off the 200-day moving average? You can always do it or supplement with vertical spreads. What about you stock traders who say, I'd like to go buy these puts, but they're expensive? Buy a put spread. Cheapen them up. You only want it $5 wide, fine. Want it $10 wide, fine. But at least you can get the insurance on the expected moves rather than having to buy. So I didn't really get too much into the strategies. It was more about definitions and mechanics, but I hope that helps everybody. So just a quick uh, recap here. Vertical spreads have limited risk, limited reward. Calls or puts can be used to make bull or bear vertical spreads. Spreads maximum value is the difference in strikes. Lower strike calls, higher strike puts have to be more valuable. Buying the call spread is identical to selling the put spread. And vice versa. Buying the put spread is identical to selling the call spread. Using in the money verticals will give you higher probability trades, lower profits. For in the money or at the money, we can use shorter dated options. Didn't quite get into that and why that is, but... Um, we typically want to give the probabilities of expiring in the money on our side, so we usually use shorter dated options. I can use out of the money and get some deltas, make it a directional uh, strategy. And then finally, use out of the money uh, if you're going to use longer dated options. So those are some of the highlights. Um, I hope that helps everybody. Looks like we're actually over our hour here. 
I can spend about maybe five minutes on some Q&A. And if you have other questions, you can certainly email Steve, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. But if anybody is interested in this stuff, one of the things that we're really trying to um, let people know about is the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab. But Alpha Trader really sets all the groundwork. This is from the Alpha Trader course. It's going to really get into the nuts and bolts of what makes things tick. Gets into a little bit of the theory. Gets into the practical side of trading. Strategy Lab, strategy lab is just about strategies. So if anybody is interested in options and in the volatile markets that we're in, you absolutely should. Because options thrive in volatility. That's what they were meant for. Uh, David, my website is optionsa to z.com. I also have a Facebook page by that if anybody's uh, just doing some option chats, market stuff like that. It's a, it's a free page, but that's my web page. But if you want to do the course, um, contact Steve, and I'd be more than happy to take any of you to train you from the ground up. Because like the commercial used to say, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. It's true in the markets. You know, education, there's no risk in the education. Because if you step into one small trap in the, in the markets, it, it can... As we all know, 500, 1,000 bucks can go out in the blink of an eye. And a lot of times there's just no reason for that. Educate yourself, understand. Even the little thing I just showed you at the end, you do three or four trades by taking the better side, whether it's the debit spread or the credit spread, you've paid for the course. Rather than taking a lifetime of doing it wrong. So just some things to think about. Uh, yes, alpha, it's called Alpha Trader. And I call it that because it's, it's kind of the beginning starts at the very beginning, profit and loss diagrams, options, why there's an options market, quotes. Then we get into some of the esoteric stuff, leaning on the book, um, you know, why, what happens when you're seeing large bid-ass spreads, what's causing that, just so that people understand what they're looking at. And then we close with three very powerful strategies, one of which is a vertical spread, and then um, that's the Alpha Trader course. Strategy Lab is just strategies. Yep, so that's, um, so again, for anybody who's interested in the markets, um, you know, options are just really the way to go. I've got a, a private client that I've had for almost two years now, uh, came to me with $1.9 million and just closed over at $4.2 million. Um, so, and it, she was never doing any options at all, all stock. First six months was all just training, and now it's hedging, rolling, morphing, splitting as things change, uh, selling half, rolling half. It just becomes super fascinating. Um, so I know it's sometimes hard to, to emphasize those points to new traders. It's not just about buying a call because you think the market's going up. It's how do we manage the risk over time? How do we use all of our Greeks? How do we use delta, gamma, theta, vega, rho? How do we use T delta, T gamma, you know, some of the second tier Greeks? And when you know those, the, the uh, versatility of options really begins to open up. Unfortunately, most people learn buy a call because you think it's going up and buy a put because you think it's going down. And they go, why do I need education? It's a classic example of not knowing what you don't know. There's an entire world of options and strategies. So for anybody who's really into uh, markets, we'd love to have you as part of the group. We're going to have some really fabulous, fascinating training sessions. This is just a taste of what you're going to get. Uh, Jamie, it was, was primarily just in um, long positions, diagonal spreads, and vertical spreads. So nothing super fancy. But we use diagonals to um, offset some of the theta. Primarily use a, a, a stock replacement strategy to keep the extrinsic value down. It's virtually a cheap stock position without a, a reg T requirement on it. So, um, you know, the, the point is that you can just get unbelievable opportunities. I had a, another set of clients, a husband and wife team, probably about two years ago when Amazon, you look on the chart, you'll see it. It opened up over 100 points on an earnings play, 
They bought a weekly option on Tuesday that expired Friday, and earnings came out on Thursday. So they only had it for four days. And they, paid, they bought 10 contracts for $1,500 out of the money options, and uh, earnings you know, popped out of the gate up 100, and it was worth 44,000. So again, another example of where if you don't have the cash, but you want to speculate on some of these, options are the way to go. Limit those losses. If you want to limit them more, do vertical spreads. Uh, K, is the Alpha Trader course appropriate for beginners? It is actually designed, I kind of hesitate to say that it is, but um, it is actually designed for beginners. But I don't want people to think it's a beginning course. It, it does take you from the very, what is a call, what is a put? What are rights and obligations? What are we getting into? Why is there an options market? On and on and on. And from there, we start going into uh, Greeks. We look at option pricing principles. We look at a whole bunch of stuff that you need to know to fully understand what you're looking at. So it gets, I don't want to say complicated, but it does get into some advanced material. But it starts from the beginning. So I guess the better way to say it is you are not expected to have one ounce of knowledge about options by coming into this. I've had people who have traded for 20 years that took the class and said there was stuff in here I've never even heard of. So I don't, I don't really like to use the word beginning. It's just that it, it includes a section for people who are brand new. Yep. Uh, Jamie, uh, she did, it was all, just about two years. Yep. Well, but the first six months also, we never, it was virtually just classroom training and, and uh, doing things on the whiteboard, paper money. Uh, she wouldn't touch an option. And then I finally showed her with stock replacement. You're not really dealing with an option. You're dealing with cheap shares of stock. That's a whole other class in itself, stock replacement strategy. But you have to understand extrinsic value, intrinsic value, how they're affected, why it's there. That's what we get into. Okay. Um, I think that's probably about time here. I know we ran a little bit over, but I want to thank everybody <clears throat> excuse me, for being here and for hanging in to the end. If you have any questions, please feel free to, um, I don't know if, uh, Tim, do you guys have an email that they can uh, email questions to? Thanks, Rick. Dan? I appreciate it very much. I wish I could uh, talk more about verticals because uh, if I had the time, I, I could go on for weeks just about verticals and the morphs, synthetic combinations on top of them, box spreads, looking at, at uh, where's the most likely price where we can get filled, looking at the box spread. It, it really becomes fascinating. It's an absolutely fascinating world. So I've been doing it every day of my life since... 1990. So I find it interesting, and I think everybody else will too. Excuse me, got something in my throat here. So I want to thank everybody for being here. Do we have uh, Jim or Beck? Anybody else on? Hey, Bill. Thank you so much for all the information that you shared with us this evening.